Hey there, I wanted to give you an update on all of this data analysis that I'm doing to track data values and books. Uh, I merged my process with preparing for heritage auctions to try and find books that are a little bit under the radar and maybe you can even uh, snipe a few. So let me show you what I've been up to. Here we go. All right, so I've been getting a lot of great feedback on some of the videos where I'm throwing in a little bit of my data analysis as part of either um, an unboxing or grading or screening. And I kind of wanted to set aside some time to kind of go over this project that I've been working on in a bit more detail, but show you some of the ways that you can apply this data to finding comics. Now, for me, it's easy to buy comics. Uh, I They're everywhere. Um, you know, you, you can always, like I always say, there's plenty of comic books. Uh, you don't have to chase. And so I, I find plenty of books all the time to buy. And what I'm trying to do is uh, organize these so that I'm buying them in a certain order. I'm prioritizing books that have uh, greater value, more potential if they're slabbed for, for profit and long-term value and not really playing the speculation game in terms of finding that super high-end, uh, high-quality, rare key book in a dollar bin and then promoting it and saying that this is going to be the next big book and then cashing out for $1,000. Um, that's really for a certain type of collector and that's really not who I am. I prefer to look at uh, kind of what's been established in the market and find places and these these holes, uh, if you will, in online stores and auctions and, and timing and data, because there's a lot of systems out there and there's a lot of in, uh, information, but are they all synchronized? Um, there's different price guides and things like that. So what I try and do is combine all of that, you know, basically just throw it into a giant funnel and then see what comes out the other side in terms of pinpointing books that have uh, value right now today and looking at eras of comic books that are you know low risk uh, with still potential to gain value and not so much the hot book of the week that your super secret Facebook flippers are trying to turn you know a two or three dollar pre-order into a twenty five dollar book where they've got fifty copies like that's that's a different style. Um, I don't play that game. I um, mean it's a it's a very exclusive company that you need to be in and you have to be on board with them and believe in the books that they believe in, and you know you're either in that circle or you're not. So what I like to do is I like to spend the time um, putting together uh, analysis. Uh, on comic books, on the market, looking at data sources, and then building algorithms around all of that data. And like I said, let it spit out information that we can all find uh, useful. Um, and so I've talked about uh, ranking online comic book stores and which ones over time are delivering high quality books. Uh, and in this case, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm building an analyzer that takes information from cover price, go collect, uh, and GPA, and it's looking at this information and telling me exactly which books have value uh, and so on. So let me just get to the data. Let, let's talk about this here. Uh, so here is this uh, spreadsheet I'm calling Comic Book Acquisition Analysis. And kind of at a high level, uh, you can see here, right, just uh, I'll give you some information. So in my buying analysis tab, so my buying tab is really, that's where I identify a particular book that I'm interested in either acquiring or analyzing. And it's it's a little random right now. Uh, however, what I do is I look at cover price and if I see a book that is on their trending list, let's say, then I will add it to um, this particular worksheet because then there's more recent data, right? So I, I need books that have had some, some more recent information uh, come in to cover price and some of these other uh, sources. So that is one way I, I look at that and I say, okay, if, if a book appears on cover price as hot or 
you know, uh, maybe then they're on the the movers and shakers list. So these are books that have had a, a number of recent sales. Then I know that there's uh, the data for that particular book is I don't want to say more real, but there's just more more numbers, more information. I can't speak to the accuracy of all of these sources. Sometimes I see second prints or variants get mixed up with the cover A's, but um, kind of in general, you kind of have to assume that uh, the the values are in the ballpark of being accurate. And this is why I take multiple sources. So here in column I, I have cover price 9.8, I have the go collect 9.8, and I have the GPA uh, here in this column. And then what I do is I take the average of the three. So if we're looking at the first line, we have Avengers 159. I'm just picking this randomly. Cover price lists this as $120 in a 9.8, $150 from go collect, and GPA says 126. So on average, it's probably around 126, like almost right smack in the middle where GPA is, is pretty much uh, spot on. Now, <clears throat> on other books, GPA may be off or may be matching. So GPA is 269, Go collects 269, and cover price is 269. So in that case, the, obviously, they're all the same. Uh, and then if we look at the next one, Avengers 170, cover price at 115, Go collect at 100, and GPA is the most expensive at 124. So what I'll do is I'll look at the average of those three. And that to me says that this is right here in this uh, column T, 9.8 fair market value average. So that's what I'm saying is the 9.8 FMV for that particular book. So I will first tag the book, get it into the spreadsheet. Then I will get all of this information added and at first I was thinking, let me just track uh, 9.8, 9.6, and 9.4 across the three sources. And then I also have uh, a raw, uh, which again, I factor into um, my priority as far as if I buy a book raw and it's not a 9.8 or 9.6 and it's a 9.4, um, did I overpay, underpay? Is it right around market value? So I do use column H to assist me in determining whether I should buy the book. So I have all of this information in here and all of these prices. And then the date column here is the last time that I updated. So I updated um, all of these Avengers uh, Bronze Age books uh, this morning. And this is where I put in the era as well. And I'm targeting mainly bronze and copper. Certainly there are some moderns in here or what I like to call like the, the movie era. Um, there's the extreme era, which is the 90s. Uh, those books are certainly in here, but where I'm finding uh, sort of the f not forgotten books, because it does make it sound like I'm trying to hype uh, books that people have, aren't talking about, and that's not what I'm saying, but forgotten books in that people are bored with them. Uh, there's really nothing else to speculate on or talk about. Um, and in if you look at the data, you know, Silver, Bronze, Copper Age, uh, those are the books that kind of slowly creep up. And then also, if there's some breaking news as far as a, a Disney Plus show or a, a HBO Max uh, project or something like that, if that character first appeared in the Silver, Bronze Age, those books, I mean, look at the Agatha Harkness book, for example, Fantastic 494, that one just started shooting up. I still regret not getting that from Heritage. Um, and you're looking at it in a high grade, it's, it's uh, quickly approaching $1,000. So there's a lot of still potential, like I keep saying, there's plenty of comic books, there's plenty of Bronze Age books, a lot of these Avengers books are, are really affordable. So that's kind of the basic uh, premise around this analysis, is finding sort of what is the average grade, or what is the average value in particular grades, and then this is where uh, I've made a couple of enhancements to the project. It's not quite a 3.0 yet, but uh, maybe a 2.1 or something like that. So let me show you that. All right, so now I've uh, flipped over to the buying sheet. And this is where, again, a lot of that data storage goes in. I'm identifying books uh, that I want to uh, potentially either acquire or track. And this is what I've added. Um, so I, I went through and... Um, started to add additional grades here where I'm tracking all of this information. So now 
I'm looking at GPA values uh, right now from 9.2 down to a 5, and then as well as the last sold value. Um, I have, and why did I do this? So I have found, and I will show you some proof of this theory, that if you are interested in participating in auctions, that GPA, the values in GPA are typically the ones that I think auctioneers, sellers, bidders, I think everybody involved, and, and I'm not going to even speculate on shill bidding, but let's just say there's all kinds of players, right? They're all involved in an auction. I believe, based on my analysis, that the GPA value, particularly around a slab book or a, a book that has been, I mean, you can say professionally graded, so if, if Heritage is listing a book raw as a 6.0 fine, it's been professionally graded. That is somebody who is paid to grade books and, and list books in that grade. I don't always assume professionally graded means slabbed. So if you have a professionally graded book, slabbed or otherwise, in a particular grade, that everyone involved in the auction or the, the listing of the book, it's more or less you know, spot on with GPA. It's it's very accurate. So I don't need to have an average of go collect and cover price and other sources and recent eBay sales. And I don't have to go through all of that because GPA does that for me. I pay for that data. I'm a subscriber. I'm not here to say you should as well. I'm just saying that's the source. It seems to be the source of truth. And let me show you why. So I'll flip over here to heritage auctions and if you've looked at some of my heritage auction prep videos you'll see more of my process and i'm not going to go and add books to this today um, and this was really i'm not i'm trying to stick to the no more purchasing in 2021 and i've got like five weeks to go and i'm holding strong as strong as i can but what i decided to do is kind of put together a trial run of books that i would target from heritage in the current Sunday and Monday select auctions. So what we're looking at right now on the screen is a list of books, uh, just Marvel, that I would consider bidding on or I want to see what it goes for. And, and you can't, I mean, there's 500 items or more published by Marvel in the current Heritage auction. I'm not going to list all 500. Um, these are books that are just interesting to me. I don't know how else to say it. So what I want to do is I would like to see, um, they're not necessarily books I would purchase, right? So um, here's Captain America 117, The First Falcon. Uh, I'm out of my price range. Uh, if you wanted this book, you probably needed, a while, needed it a while ago. Um, I had a target set of $471. And over here, we can see that it sold uh, with... The buyer's premium, which again, all that means is that is exactly what you're going to pay. So even though you bid $675, uh, you're actually paying $810. Look at the GPA percentage, 99.39%. So it basically finished at exactly the GPA value for this grade. And so if we go back to the left, it is $815. For a 7.0. Okay, so that's one book. And if you look at, here's some that aren't. Here's here's a 75% of GPA. Remember, these are not all slabbed. They're not all white pages. There are some variations. But what I do is I summarize this. So in the current auction, I'll move this over a little bit. Right here in this field, right? So this is highlighted, 97.53%. What that means is that out of the auctions that I have tracked, and these are random, these are just books that I like, the books that, I, the titles that I love, X-Men, Star Wars, I don't know why, but the Silver Age Nick Fury books, I always track those, I like those, I uh, love those Starenko covers. And Amazing Spider-Man, probably my all-time favorite series, right up there with X-Men and Iron Man, right? So these are books that I'm tracking. It also depends on what's available. Based on just this auction and just these items, so we're talking about these books that have finished on day one, 
And then the, the ones I did not select, these are day two, so I don't have their finals, final values. Almost with the buyer's premium, remember, with the buyer's premium, almost 100% of GPA, meaning it in total, 97% the total final bids with buyer's premium was just a touch under what GPA says. It's eerie just how precise and close this is. So that helps me, right? So if I'm bidding on Fantastic Four 60, uh, sorry, Fantastic Four 41 in a 6.0 white pages, I can then say, based on the GPA value of $100 for a 6.0, so a, a slabbed, uh, fine silver age, uh, 1965 Marvel comic Fantastic Four, CGC white pages, GPA is only $100, so you don't want to get caught up in FOMO and getting in a bidding war and all of that. So I just set my target as $57. I won't go over 83, so I could have bid 60 or 70 bucks, maybe even 75 and a cut bid and been very happy with this purchase. And here was how it sold. It sold for $109. So it went a little above GPA because I, I would say even that book feels undervalued slightly, but you know, it's 100 to $109. I mean, is it really undervalued at 100 bucks? Uh, last sold 122. Um, again, just using that GPA. Now, let's go back to the first worksheet here. And let's find Fantastic Four 41, right? And there it is, GPA six at $100. Okay, so it's the same value. So what? that heritage worksheet is actually pulling from this worksheet. So now I know that as I'm tracking the heritage auctions or I'm adding uh, new items, new lots within the auction, I can pull from my buying analysis worksheet to get the most accurate values for the books. So that's how I'm combining these projects together. So I'm, I'm taking my time spent here where I was originally using this just to purchase books from either Mile High Comics, Atomic Avenue, and then that was the other update. I added Metropolis Comics. Metropolis Comics is interesting. It's it's a marketplace. Um, they do list books. They they do list with a grade. They're not professionally graded. Those are the owners grading their own books, just like Atomic Avenue. So you do have to be a little careful. And what I'm going to start to do is when I go through my online store rankings, I'm going to go back and start to break up uh, my purchases from Atomic Avenue by seller um, and then as well as Metropolis. I've only purchased from Metropolis once and I remember getting um, a, it was an X-Men book. I don't remember the issue exactly. I'll look it up. But, uh, and I want to say I bought it as a very fine and I, it came back, I, I think I graded it up to a 9.0. Like I was, I was pleasantly surprised there were scans there. Anyway, I'm trying to add more data sources as well. Uh, more sources for comic books, I should say, for uh, where you can purchase them, where you can find them online. Uh, again, alternatives to eBay. As a last resort, if you're tracking a book in here or if I'm looking at something and I'm like, I really want Fantastic Four 48, um, you know, your two probable sources are, uh, if you're buying online, Heritage and eBay. So if I don't find any of these books in, uh, at you know, uh, Mile High or, or Heritage or anywhere else online, I will click over to eBay and I'll manually search there. Um, there's really no good way to automate that. I've thought about it and, and I will continue to think about is there a way to double check and see if there's any of these books that I would say have value or potential um, if they're on eBay, how do I get notified? How do I figure out a way to um, understand that I don't want to purchase that book from that store because it's on eBay for half that amount, right? I don't want to. I don't want to do that either. Um, but it's hard because eBay could list a book as near mint, raw, and you get it, and it's a very good um, because you didn't look at the scans. Like I mean, that, that's kind of why I don't put eBay in here. Um, so what else can I tell you? Um, I'm still working on the buy priority and I'm looking at other ways to filter the data. And let me show you that and then we'll kind of wrap up uh, this video as far as analysis goes.
All right, so this is my buy priority tab. And what this tells me uh, is that based on what's available in the online marketplace, which I'm kind of using in total of the sources, um, then if this book is available for sale at at least one of those places, based on all of the different values that I have in here and, and data points, which ones are, you know, the priority in terms of which ones should you purchase first before somebody else gets them because these have the most value, potential, uh, etc. Uh, one thing I've been doing is I've been setting up some filter views. So let's create a new one and I'm going to create a new filter view and let's just do it on Avengers. So we'll clear these and we'll name it um, Avengers, keep it simple. And then if I scroll to the right, this automatically ranks all Avengers books that I'm tracking, not all Avengers books across the internet in total, but the Avengers books that I have spent the time tracking, that I am putting in here and I'm entering the data. And it has this by priority column that I've created. And at some point it kind of runs out, right? So these that are listed currently at 560, they're just not available. Um, none of these are available from the stores that I'm tracking. It doesn't mean you can't get them on eBay. It doesn't mean you can't get them from your local comic shop. It just means online, they're not available. But if we scroll up and look at where the buy priority changes, we can see where it's available. So if I only collected Avengers comics and I wanted to purchase a couple online, I would look at this Atomic Avenue seller, Mark M, or Silver Dollar Comics, and based on this ranking, I would say that Avengers 96 listed as near mint, which again, that's that's part of the risk. It doesn't mean you're buying a 9.8 copy and you're going to turn around and slab it and sell it for $1,000. That's not what it means. What it means is it has potential. And it also is a low risk. I'm tracking, uh, well, let's see how many I'm tracking right now. I am tracking... 872 books. It's row 873. The first row is the header. It's 872 books right now at, at the time of recording. And out of those 872 books, Avengers 96 from Atomic Avenue is priority 17. Now, if you want to gamble and buy this book for $103, then it has a lot of potential to, you know, retain value, go up in value, and so on. And a lot of this is built into my algorithm that I'm not going to break down here, but it goes in and looks at uh, what is that raw fair market value. Remember I talked about that? So if you, across all grades, not just near mint, across all grades, the book sells for $48.26. So even if you spend 103 and it's just a completely beat up copy and it was, was not listed correctly. The first thing I would do is contact the seller, potentially get a refund. So yeah, you may pay for shipping, although a lot of the sellers offer free shipping. You may have to pay for return shipping. There's something you'd have to work out there. And you don't want to always do this where you keep returning books because then you've you set a, a, a bad precedent and you're affecting the relationship you would have with the seller. So I'm not suggesting that you just buy, look at the book and send it back every time. But I'm saying that, again, looking at the risk factor, looking at the fair market value, um, here's the fair market value average, $181. Um, so that's important, too, because a GPA 9.4, this book is 204. Go Collect 9.4 is 180. And Cover Price 9.4 is 159. So the fair market average is $181. And again, if you're purchasing it for 103, you're getting it for less than what those sources are saying uh, is the the average. So if we go back here to buying, um, sorry, buying analysis, you'll see the fair mark. This is where so buying analysis is where all the calculations occur. So this 9.4 FMV average, that's taking those three sources and dividing them by three. And that's where this uh, FMV average comes from. So that's an interesting uh, couple of columns to look at here. 
is out, out of column W, X, Y, right? This is mile high atomic, and this is uh, Metropolis. So if it's in bold, then that's the lowest price you can get it at one of those sources. So for this one, you're buying it for $103 from Atomic. And assuming near mint is 9.4, sometimes, again, look at the listing. Sometimes they may, see, they may say 9.2. They may actually grade it for you. You can also request scans and things like that. Uh, so this is just an example. Uh, you could purchase this right now as you're watching this video and click over, uh, contact the seller, ask for a scan. If it looks good, buy it. Uh, maybe it needs a press. Maybe you bump it up to a 9.6. And this has a lot of potential. Again, uh, this is not investment advice. <laughs> uh, I am not uh, a financial analyst. I'm just saying I'm looking at the numbers. And this one in particular, if you're going to buy it for $103, if for some reason you're able to clean it up and press it, um, the fair market value average of a CGC 9.8 is over $1,000. These are the books that are forgotten. These are the books that are lost. People are not tracking the data like this. Um, I do, and I'm sharing it with you because um, I don't want you to get caught up in all the flipping and the hype and the FOMO and the, the, the weekly uh, hyping and pushing of certain books or the, the repetitive pushing of the same books over and over and over. Um, it's ju it just kind of wears me out. I like to look at this. Let's look at hundreds and thousands of comics over time. Let's look at older eras um, and, and look at some fine folks and sellers that are doing this. Um, you can even say, you know what, $100 is really kind of out of my price range, but I see this one, Avengers 182, uh, for $7.50. That's near mint. Um, fair market value is $58. I'll, I'll take a chance. Maybe with shipping, that's $10. bucks. i will take a chance at that. Uh, you know, if worst case, it doesn't look good. I can put it on eBay and sell it for 20. I doubled my money. So that's kind of where I'm at right now with a lot of this. Uh, I'm really getting into the analysis of it and trying to find those specific books. Um, it's a lot of uh, data entry. It's a lot of work. Um, but I find in the end, the result is ex basically what I'm doing is I'm trying to automate buying low, selling high. That is the fundamental, everyone that says, well, I've got a strategy to make money with comic books. They're all liars. The strategy is buy low, sell high. That's it. Um, even if you're one of those flippers, you're buying low, you're buying a stack of 50 books at $2 each, and you're trying to sell them high at $10 each. I mean, that, that's, that's the fundamental uh, thing that we're all trying to do is uh, buy low, sell high, or buy low and keep for the PC. Uh, keep everything in high grade. And a lot of this, what I'm tracking, I'm trying to track high grade, 949698, raw, slabbed, highest grade comics that I can find for the best available price online. Because I don't have the comic shop down the street with all the keys in the dollar bin, like everybody else on YouTube says they have. I have to look for books like you do. I have to look from home. Um, I have to search online. And I want to find alternatives uh, to eBay to find these books. So what do you think about this? Is this helpful? Um, would you like to see more titles, more, more information? Would you like to see some of the priorities uh, more frequently? Please let me know in the comments. I love this stuff. I love talking about comic books. I love the numbers. And uh, let's all use this to be more strategic buyers, collectors, and investors of comic books. Thanks for watching. Happy collecting. And see you next time.